Um, and it's something that I, I share with my students, right? That we are diminished in what we perceive democracy is. Um, we have moved from more of a democratic process, what I would call participatory democracy to representative democracy, where mm -hmm. we think that being a citizen is to vote every four years, which is what Mr. Higgs has asked for. Mm -hmm. Give me a mandate, leave me alone. I don't want to deal with the house, right? I just want to <laughs> implement my plan. Yep. Greens do not believe in that. What Greens believe in is participatory democracy, local decision making, local direction, local involvement. Um, and so that democratic process of participation is fundamentally a core principle. It's why we're so committed to proportional representation. So if you were to pick three things about what it is to be green, it's that yes, environmental in the context of social and economic, it's about democracy, participatory democracy, um, and that means reform, right? And so we're about refocusing things, um, cutting waste, but also getting electoral reform. Mm -hmm. So food security is a priority and supporting young farmers getting into it. People who want, I teach at the university, my partner teaches at the university. We have students who just all they want to do is be where we are, grow food like we do, and we need to help them get access to that first piece of land. So things like land trusts, you know, municipalities have access to land. What can they make available? All sorts of things like that around food. Um, there are also, though, um, you know, other uh, issues of concern. Um, uh, we've got uh, seniors that having to are having to leave our riding uh, to go to town because they don't have access to things. Um, so another priority is affordable uh, community-based housing for seniors uh, to try to keep them, you know, we've had some wonderful, wonderful people who have just been a huge asset to the community in Keswick Ridge have to move to town because they just couldn't take care of the property anymore. So um, we think seniors and affordable seniors housing is um, another uh, piece of this for sure, uh, to see just how much access Irving has under Mr. Higgs compared to anywhere else in this country is is kind of shocking. Hmm. Um, the premier's never met with anybody that I ever work with, but I know it can be a phone call away for some other people. Hmm. That kind of disproportionate access to power um, and influence um, is not healthy for any um, uh, democracy. So if we're looking at jobs, I see uh, kind of three lines of opportunity here. One is on restoration. So people working in the woods, bringing that forest back to ecological health. I see jobs in um, value-added uh, products, but also in the carbon aspect of it, sequestering carbon and biofuels. So we have an opportunity um, to use forest material at appropriate scale, not huge hmm. electricity plants, but think more boilers, more distributed schools, buildings, or whatever. Um, we can create ethanol. We can create other kinds of products from um, our plant-based um, materials. So there is an enormous opportunity in the bioeconomy, and we need to embrace that. Um, and I think the other aspect of this is I'm the real deal. Like what you see is what you get. So I live by my values. I am authentic. Um, you're not going to have to guess <laughs> what I think about things, but I'm also very empathetic. I mean, I can hear lots of different points of view, lots of different ways of coming at an understanding um, of an issue. I've worked many years in building a consensus, but that doesn't mean I abdicate um, my ethics um, and the, the kinds of connections that I have with mm. what I feel is a way of being in relationship with each other and the planet. Um, and so that's always going to be the way I interpret a problem. Um, and I'm learned at FCM with municipalities. I mean, just a little story. When I first arrived there, I had been a very high profile campaigner at Sierra Club of Canada. It was front page news in the Globe and Mail that I was leaving uh, to go to work for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Before I even arrived, at my job, um, people from across the country in coal-based communities, there was a caucus of municipalities that were dependent on coal, 
um, called for my firing. Yep. Um, when I first arrived at the annual conference that happened not too far from my arrival at, on the job, um, I met with the mayor of, of uh, Hinton, Alberta, and we sat down and I said, you know, Ross Rizvold, he was a wonderful person. I said, you know, let's not debate climate change. Let's stay focused on solutions. I'm going to find things that help your community save money and achieve what you want to achieve. And when we run out of those things, we'll reevaluate our deal. We shook on it and we became huge partners um, over the course of, of several years to the point that he was part of a national process of municipalities to develop recommendations to the federal government on climate change investments for communities, mm -hmm. and he presented it to the board of directors. And mm -hmm. so that's what you can do mm -hmm. um, by finding that, that place um, which you have uh, common ground. Um, and, you know, we think of ethics, um, I think, very narrowly, um, almost um, starving ethics um, with you know, is it duty or is it rules or utilitarian where it's cost benefit analysis, right? That's kind of like what came out of the enlightenment. My, um, my PhD studied ecological virtue ethics. What is character? What is ecological character? Um, and there's a few things that really pop out um, that we have to nurture. Um, and one is humility. Um, to understand that we don't know everything and so therefore we need to work together, but also perseverance and just how important it is to build your capacity to persevere and press through, <laughs> mm -hmm. be determined, um, and then um, to engage through benevolence and love. So um, I'm, I'm big on ecological character. <laughs>